Hello and welcome to the EV Cafe Takeaway, a podcast focused on that zero emission future that we all hope for. And every week I am joined as always, well mostly always, by one of the wonderful members of the team, EV Cafe team. And this week we've got the lovely JC, fresh from about a bout of nasty COVID. Um, how you doing, buddy? You good? Um, yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. Yeah, still um, still struggling. I, I just don't seem to be quite as sharp as everybody else at the moment, but that's a pretty standard state of affairs. Well, do you know what, JC? It gives it gives the rest of us hope, doesn't it? You know, because you're <laughs> usually sharper, so much sharper than the rest of us, it makes us all feel inadequate. So we get a day no. to feel better than you, which is Stop good. Stop that. Um, anyway, nonsense. moving swiftly along. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. It's uh, a great opportunity because every week we get to speak to lovely people from across our industry, innovators, pioneers, collaborators. And this week is no exception. We have got the famous, wonderful TV and film star, Emma Thompson, but not the the Emma Thompson, this Emma Thompson, this (laughs) the Emma Thompson. Emma, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you, um, are you bored of that yet, being Emma Thompson? If if I had a pound for every time, <laughs> I think I'd be rich by now. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd have more money than the other Emma, Emma Thompson. Thompson. I, yeah. I certainly would. I certainly would. So I'm Emma Thompson. I am uh, I'm head of business operations for the Society of Operations Engineers. I'm here today to represent IRTE, the Institute of Road Transport Engineers, which is one of our professional sectors. Fantastic. And I, I I, mean, I've been around the, the sort of commercial vehicle show because obviously um, IRT is one of the key partners in the commercial vehicle show. And I've been around the, the commercial vehicle show for many, many years, probably longer than I'd like to admit to. Um, and I must admit the um, Society of Operations Engineers I hadn't come across my radar previously i'd seen the irt but i would love to kind of understand what your body represents and how you help the people within it um and why you partnered with the cv show to uh, or to you know been a part of the cv show for all these years yes so society of operations engineers is um almost like an umbrella organization which supports our professional sector councils and one of them being the Institution of uh, Road Transport Engineers, IRTE. We also have a BES, Bureau of Engineers Surveyors. We have environmental sector, and then we go on to operations and plant sector. So what is it that you do? So you represent all these different groups of, of very talented engineers, but what's your purpose? Our purpose is offering um, support to our members. Our members. We are a, a membership organisation. Um, we we predominantly cover um, a series of of different engineering fields, as I said, with the professional sectors. So we offer a service to our members to keep them up to date what's going on in the industry, and helping them further their career. So it could be that. Um, within professional engineering that they need to gain engineering council status and we offer that platform to do that for them I see oh. and and why is it that the commercial vehicle show in particular is important to IRTE it, it's a very important element to IRTE um, IRTE has has been around um, for a uh, a number of years since 1945 um, and for them for our our sectors um, I, the, particularly the IRT sector um, they they particularly like the commercial vehicle show because it's it's a home for them it's a home where we can showcase some fantastic innovation ideas um, you know, seeing vehicles and all those different elements, not just to the vehicles, you know, other components around the show, um, but also it offers that networking opportunity as well. And for our members, they very much like to come to the show and it's almost as if everything is in one place and, you know, they they can get their business out of it as well as coming to our stand and they may have a query about their membership or they might want some more guidance on on their own 
a career and they said right what's the next steps so I would you know for example I'd like to apply for chartered status um, and then we we help them with that. I'm absolutely fascinated by your enthusiasm Emma it's just it just oozes from you are you an engineer or are you just somebody who gets really passionate about the thing that you do or both. <laughs> I'm, unfortunately, I'm not an engineer, but I have been in the industry for over 21 years. Um, and I've, you know, I, I absolutely adore it. And it is a huge passion of mine. And seeing how we've got all the different fields and elements of engineering, I've, I've seen it across. And being able to to work with that and seeing how people work with their innovation, their ideas, and how engineering has has come along in years, you know, um, it's just fascinating. It really is. Talk to us about that, because you'll have seen in that 21 years a massive shift in, in engineering and its importance to society. Tell us about that. It is. I mean, when I first started, I remember it being a very male-dominated mm. environment, um, and, you know, coming into that, it, it was, it wasn't off-putting by no means, but it was what everyone was used to. But if you look at where we were 21 years ago to now, mm. it's, it's very much 50-50 because I've seen, you know, I've, I've had experience with working with female engineers as well, you know, working on projects as as well as female leaders i mean we previously had a patron uh, beverly bell um who was our patron for a number of years um and actually i saw her as as an icon i learned quite a lot from her um and you know you can see the way it's gone from strength to strength and it's not just for female engineers it's it's all about uh, diversity now and inclusion and I've also seen that in the most recent years, I say in the last two years, that's really has come more mm. apparent and, and being more inclusive for people. It's important that you get what you do right, isn't it? It's one of those yeah. things which we, we take for granted engineering. It's just, you know, we'll put a road in or we'll build that building or we'll, we'll you know, put a bridge up. Um, and everybody just says, Oh, yeah, great. It's when you get down to the nuts and bolts of this is a human being using their skills, their their intelligence to often defy Mother Nature, science, gravity, you, you're incredible human beings. And when things go wrong, as occasionally they do, it's a catastrophe. So what you do, matters far more than we give you credit for sometimes i appreciate that and i certainly cannot take take any credit it's working with our members that are out there at the forefront of engineering and being able to support that um is our way of contrib contributing to it exactly it's a team yeah. game isn't it and, and it is important because the stresses involved in engineering mean that you know you're very often at the coalface doing the job all day every day and having the support of this this organization your organization the society of operations engineers is critical to make sure that you're kept up to speed with what's going on you don't miss the important developments that are happening in the industry and that you've got professional support to become even better than you already are yes absolutely cool i've got it right <laughs> see that's a good sell <laughs> well done john that's something you've nine got minutes right. in well, and i understand <laughs> But it's important, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, your organization sort of going on the front foot uh, with knowledge and insight, because I know what it's like in my own sort of sector that, you know, development happens and we it's so easy to miss it. You know, a press release here, a product change there. It, it, and, and then suddenly, you know, and in your world, it's legislative change, engineering, you know, sort of calculations that are being needed to be upgraded or all of those kinds of things. So when you think in the context of the CV show, that obviously this event that is coming up in the not too distant future, um, what is it that you guys are excited about in terms of going to your membership who you will meet and network with? What is, um, you know, what is going on in the show that will really encourage them to be there and help them in their journey forwards yeah i mean there's there's a, a a few new incentives this year at the commercial vehicle show one being the the seminar which is a packed 
three-day event um, that uh, already is fully booked up. So we're quite excited about that. We've also got one of our very own uh, members, George Hayward, speaking on, on the third day. Um, and we're, we're really excited about that. In addition to that, we, we've launched Destination Net Zero, which is going to be a section at the show that's mm -hmm. predominantly for uh, some of our OEMs that will showcase some of their vehicles. Um, so we're very passionate about that. In addition to that, on our stand, we're going to have some professional uh, registration review panel interviewers that will be able to help our members and guide them on their next steps to further their career, whether that's uh, engineering technician, incorporated engineer or chartered engineer status. Wow, fantastic. And again, coming back to John's point, it seems that that you are you're passionate, and and when you start talking about how you help people, it seems to come across that that is a motivating factor. What got you into this kind of um, operation? Because you say you're not an engineer, uh, but no. you you're here supporting people, helping people on their journey to be an engineer. What is it in you that that kind of makes you want to help? I think engineering is is a, a niche market in its own and also where it has so many different platforms and variety. I think it's the, you know, the variety that engages me. And, you know, I when I first started all those years ago, I couldn't tell you the difference between an engineer surveyor and a road transport, uh, you know, workshop manager. Um, and it was then I was like, well, what do these people actually do? And then you then get to work with them and understand it. And you build these relationships with us. I mean, we've got some amazing stakeholders um, and, and that, that we use all the time um, that help us with those technical services, uh, whereas I'm not an engineer, but I heavily rely on them to give me the support and advice that's needed. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, we're very fortunate to have that. Yeah. So... Just thinking about what what got you to to this place. You know, you started twenty one years ago. Obviously, before that, you you'd had some career. You'd been in education, whatever it was. Yes. What made you the person that we see before us today in terms of that desire to help, that desire to make a difference, to support? Yeah, I would say um, working with the team of people that I do. Um, we've got some. A great support network where we work. Um, we've got directors uh, that are very supportive and shout, shout our corner and, and they're also passionate and I think l I've learned a lot from them as well mm. as creating relationships with our stakeholders and from their journey, their day-to-day -day journey and it's such an inspiration to hear that it almost gives you that empowerment to say I want to be part of that, um, what can I do to help? And mm. and that's where it's come from. And that's where, you know, it, it's initially stemmed from that and then building up on it. And, I'm you know, I'm at now in a position 21 years later that I can say, well, I've been part of it, you know, and it's all about mm. that inclusivity as well. That's a really interesting point you make there about being inspired to join the industry. And we know that recruitment is hugely challenging at the moment and finding the right young people to come in the industry is something which many many sectors are facing how do you as an organization help to bridge the skills gap and encourage young people to come into the industry because it's not let's be honest it's not taught at school engineering you know i, I don't remember any engineering lessons so from that very sort of shallow base of of young kids who are going to grow up and say i want to go and build some stuff i want to create big things they don't exist they're, they're very few and far between but we depend absolutely as a society on those people so what do you do to help get young minds engaged in your world? For us, it's it's looking at those apprenticeship programs that some of our stakeholders already do and helping them to, to support them and showing them that if you were to join, you know, a professional engineering institution like the IRTE, we can help further your career. And it's almost going through those career steps with them. Mm. And it's, if you think of it like, like, um, you know, the journey um, of, of a person growing, 
in the same step as you know an apprentice joining as a very young member to them eventually becoming a, a fellow engineer i mean it's it's an incredible journey to to watch and to see um and them feeling part of something you know knowing that they can come to us that we'll keep them up to date what's going on in the industry we offer that career development through the engineering council route as well as society for environment bringing in our sustainable element into that and it's just being able to offer them that platform mm, it's really important isn't it it's really key to yeah. engage for very early years because yeah you know, my son my son is a, a brilliant mind his his um use of minecraft when he was seven eight nine was incredible and being able to take that gamified engineering world where you build structures from not very much which are mind-blowing and transitioning that to the real world is where we need kids we need them inspired to love what they do just as you do just as mm. paul and i do and it's so hard to find young people who are saying yeah i want to do that i want to push the boundaries a bit but we need them more than ever we do we do. They're the next generation. And it's almost as if we have to invest in that generation for engineering as well in general to move forward. Yeah. Thank goodness we've got people like you with that level of, of commitment to it. What are the challenges that you face now? So you've got a very successful organization with lots of members. What are the big things that keep you awake at night? You're thinking, oh, what now? What do we do? It's being on, on top of our game. And making sure that our member offering is one that's um, different from the others. Um, we we are a very personable um, professional engineering institution, and that's that's where we're very fortunate. Where we've got that platform, we give them that one to one service that's that's needed, and they feel that they can come to us because they can trust us, and we'll help them you know, in their career journey. Mm. Are you able to give us any insight as to how you continue to build that proposition? Because standing still is no longer going to cut it, is it? You need to constantly be developing new services, new support. What's the, What does that look like in 24, 25? I think, uh, dare I say it, but platforms like TikTok uh, and <laughs> using WhatsApp, engaging with it, the younger generation that are constantly on their phones. I mean, you can't even walk down the street and there's someone just looking at their phone and you're like, mm. okay, I need to try and pass them. Um, <laughs> but you think if they're doing that all the time, we need to be part of that. We need to be mm. on that phone shouting about what we do and in mm. giving that encouragement and saying, we can help you, you know, just, just have a look at our website or, you know, watch this video or see this testimonial. And I think that's what mm. we need to do. Mm. I think it really is so important, isn't it, to bring a story to life because, you know, look, I'm I'm not an engineer. I don't do detail. I'm not very good at health and safety. All of those sorts of things are the things I sort of turn off about. So I absolutely need you guys to be 100% on your game because, you know, if I'm driving across the fourth road bridge and it was built by me, it would be like falling to bits <laughs> halfway across. You know, Meccano was not my thing. Minecraft? <laughs> hmm. Not sure about that. So how? How are you going to do this? I mean, I agree with you. TikTok, yes. You know, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. I mean, you know, I fell over into vlogging a few years ago and you we you referenced a video. Oh, that's him. <laughs> yes, that's me. Um, how are you going to get your industry champions, I suppose, to come forward and do some of this stuff with you guys? Or have you already started and we can we can kind of go and find it somewhere? Yeah, I mean, we, we have made a start where we've got um, some of our younger engineers that are still in education um, that say, oh, this is amazing. Why didn't I ever find this before? And it's using them to, sh to shout and say, you need to go to IRTE. This is what they offer. This is how they can support you. And it's really putting the onerous on them um, to fight our corner and say, you need to be part of this. So are you guys on, on TikTok now and on Insta? Not, not yet, and... Um, oh. and, but we are. It, it is coming. It is coming. Um, so, yeah, well, watch, watch this space. <laughs> do let us know because we, we'll be happy to promote that because, you know, 
you got to love an engineer getting excited about safety. I get excited about vans and people get, you know, think I'm an idiot um, uh, that don't get vans, right? John now gets vans. I've badgered him forever. And so, you know, the, the services that you guys provide, you know, are just going to make such a difference to our future that Absolutely. it's really important. John. I'm just, I'm, I'm sat here just thinking about the future, and what it looks like. And, and part of the biggest challenge in our world are the superpowers. They are China, economic powerhouses that are able to create modules for big buildings, big structures at costs we can't achieve in the UK. That's a big challenge for a professional organization such as yours in promoting our own homegrown talent isn't it how do you combat that yeah it's it's a difficult one to combat i'll be honest i think um you know one one thing that we we pride ourselves on is um you know we uh, we have registration with society for the environment and we offer you know professional registration for that whether it be chartered environmentalist or environmental practitioner and Perhaps it's not about the big buildings and, you know, what China can offer, but it's about how we can be more sustainable in our offering. And mm. as as it looks, you know, going forward um, with what's happening in the world, I think that brings a hell of a lot more benefit to people doing it in a mm. more sustainable mm. uh, way. Absolutely. I and, absolutely and, agree, Paul. Go on. Well, no, I was just going to say because that, it, it's almost. I, mean, I know, John, you've been involved in this, but grand designs is all. You know, when we when we see the guys uh, um, at grand designs on the on the TV, they're often celebrating these new pioneering ways of building homes, building buildings that are, um, you know, less demanding on the resources around us, and you know, they've got heat pumps and uh, you know, air source things and. I, again, I'm, I'm not very good at all of this sort of stuff, as you can tell. Um, but is, is that the type of thing you mean? Building more sustainably, building more sympathetically to our environment so that actually we get to live long enough to enjoy it rather than watch it decay all around us? Absolutely. And, you know, the technology that's coming in now where you can either you can buy the power or you have um, the you're now able to make the power on site yourself and it's about just putting mm. that back into the environment um so i see that being the future and and the way that we go more greener do you see that being a a, a growing area for engineering in a in a broad sense are businesses embracing sustainability or do they see it as a bit of a challenge i think they are embracing it i mean if you look at some of the new technologies that that come in with hydrogen in vehicles for example um, you can see the what the shift in that um, mm. and with with electric um, and all the different um, things that are available to us now that we never had before so I think there has already been a shift in that and that will continue to develop it's a big it's a big shift isn't it because the cost sometimes of especially commercial specialist plants yes. and equipment is massive we we had a um, a, a previous partner who was working towards a, a zero emission civils company. Uh, and I know he's found it incredibly challenging to find all of the different parts of his ecosystem that were lower carbon. Um, and it's, it is hugely challenging. Anybody who thinks sustainability is easy in, in a construction or engineering yeah. sense, it's not. It need, and, and I think that's where the strength of your organisation comes in, in that you're able to act almost as a knowledge sharing hub. Exactly that. And we have a huge network where we put on CPD events to help support our members and mm. giving them that guidance and support and, and examples of, of how we can move forward with that. Mm. Mm. I think so case it's studies not are really... Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We're on the same thing. Case studies. Um, yes. We were going to say the same thing. Showing the the um, benefits of what you do and how you do it, the transition, and how 
let's be honest, it can be really difficult and it takes leadership and commitment, financial commitment, mm. uh, as well as the kind of moral uh, fibre to move in that direction. It is a real, real struggle for businesses to be profitable and sustainable mm. in the early days. But if you see that long-term journey with a supportive trade organisation, with colleagues who are prepared to collaborate and share, we make the transition happen. It might not be at the pace we want, but it's yeah. happening. And it is happening now, thanks to you. Yeah, it's great to be part of it. With Within your world of, of engineering in particular, are there focused legislation? So like, if I talk about transport, obviously I've got a 2035 deadline for the end of the sale of petrol and diesel vehicles. Are there... Um, transitional legislation causing i mean i know like new build new homes you put a charge point on all the new homes now are there other yeah. things impacting your sector that you need to make your your people aware of i wouldn't say there is as such at the moment but there is at the moment it's still a lot of because we we predominantly don't focus on buildings as such but more of the engineering around it and mm -hmm. it's just working with those to see how we can get that to work. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yes, I wouldn't say we do that directly at, at the moment, but it's, you know, we're more of a a sounding board to support those those people that, that are doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. Asking those questions, um, yeah. Yeah, asking those questions and working out what they're doing and how they're doing mm -hmm. it and what support they need. Yeah. So what... Fast forward five years, what does success look like for you and for the IRTE in, in the sector that we're operating at the moment? You know, I think in five years, it's going to be about um, the next generation, Gen Z, um, and it's how we keep up with that. Um, I think I, in an ideal world, you know, I, I can see it just all being online, uh, more virtual than in person. Um, mm. and it's how we then adapt that in terms of technology and engineering in general, because it's, it's very much going to, it could technically be more, more machines are involved rather than humans. Um, I mean, if you look at the way AI is going at the moment, it could be something else that, um, that we do going forward. Um, is that, is that a threat? Do you think? Because, you know, there are a lot of people out there who are very uncomfortable about AI. Personally, I love it. And I think with a little bit of human interaction, you can have the really good bones of something created by AI. The basic structures can be there. And there's an inevitability about that does impact the workforce potentially. But if we harness AI and we teach it, um, then there's opportunity there. And I suppose I see the glass half full yes. uh, rather than half empty. That as a as a member organisation, I guess if I was you, I'd be thinking, hmm, how do we get AI to be a member of our trade organisation? That's going to be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely would be. And it would be like uh, to go in the background there and just add something to AI so they include us. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that that is a difficult one. Um, but I think with with new things coming on board, you need to be part of it, otherwise you miss mm. out. Yeah, so it, it's finding almost finding a niche to get in involved in that to make sure we're at the forefront. Mm. Yeah, You've got to be in it to win it. And I think that's Absolutely. the thing. Mm. You're brave enough to see that there are an awful lot of organisations at the moment saying, "Well, we'll just sit and watch," or mm. "Yeah, well, well, we're not sure about that." bit uncomfortable whereas i think what i'm getting from you is a sense that you'll take this head on and actually you'll grab it with both hands and say where's the opportunity how can we benefit from this as a an organization uh, for our members but also as a wider society that you yes. can deliver something which if you're not there nobody else will coming together and collaborating is the key to unlocking success mm, i agree I agree with that. And it's almost if you're not at the forefront, you're going to miss out. Yeah. And there'll be someone else that will come in and take that on board. Mm. Absolutely. I, I do think, I mean, this is a great saying. I've used it many times, but um, Justin Trudeau, from his prime, prime minister from Canada, said the Indeed. pace of change has never been as fast and yeah. it will never be as slow again. 
because we are just seeing on this exponential journey of, of, of really rapid change. So let me pick Go up on. on that then. Yeah. So um, there was a wonderful uh, phrase that somebody used this week, uh, which I grabbed hold of, and it's, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. Ooh. And I think what's – what? yeah, it was good, wasn't it? And I think this is what, what I'm getting from the IRTE and SOE is that you stand for something. Mm. You're a flag that, that the industry can rally around to drive forward change. We're not yes. just going to fall for anything. We're not just going to be told that we can't do or this shouldn't happen. You are going to all work collaboratively together to develop better ways of doing stuff. And that has to be positive. Um, yeah. How do people become members? How those engineers who may now be tuning in and saying, yeah, that she sounds like she sounds like somebody I want to do work with. Um, how do they get in touch? They can get in touch via our website. Um, we're also on social media, uh, on LinkedIn and everything else. Um, but also um, if they're at the CV show and they want to come to see our stand, we're labelled as IRTE. Um, and we'd welcome them with open arms to come and visit us and we can register them there and then on the stand. And they right, don't well, have to be a member. If they are in the industry and they're working in engineering, there's other elements of the ways that they can join. And we can put all of the details for uh, contacting you in the copy that goes with this particular podcast. Mm. But just for ease, soe.org.uk. Uh, will take you to the Society of Operations Engineers and you can find out a lot more there. Thank you. Absolutely. And obviously get along to the CV show because the CV show on the 23rd to the 25th of April is going to be a really exciting event. Obviously, we've got the EV Cafe Village there, so we'll be there and that will be exciting too. But a great opportunity <laughs> and really interesting that the seminars are already sold out. That's amazing. I know. It's fantastic. And it just goes to show, you know, this is not something that we've done before. And mm. as you talked about earlier about, you know, testing things, we yeah. just thought let's pull it out there. And now we've got a three full, you know, packed days. So we're quite excited. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to, to seeing you there. That'll be great. And and perhaps yes. joining one or two of the sessions, that'll be brilliant. But in the meantime, you can check out the websites, both for SOE and also for the EV Cafe, if you want to listen to more podcasts just like this one. Um, but in the meantime, Emma, thank you so much for today. You've mm. given us real insight into what it is to be an organization that supports engineering and that whole move forward. It's really exciting. Any final thoughts, JC and Emma? Anything you want to leave us with? I'll, I'll let the guest go first. <laughs> Thank you. I did also would like to add that uh, IRT promotes um, a, two schemes, one called ERTEC, and it's a, a scheme that our members um, can take part in, or they don't initially have to be a member, but this is to support individuals that work on uh, HDV vehicles. Uh, as well as that, we have uh, another scheme called uh, IRT Workshop Accreditation, where we accredit workshops. Um, and I think if people would like more information on that, they can, again, find it on our website or come and see us at our stand. Amazing. And stand is where I want to pick up. Standards. One of the things you do is you set the bar for what is acceptable, what is the right way of doing stuff. And I think that's really, really important that you're not just there as, you know, giving all engineers a big hug and saying, come and play. Mm. You are there going into businesses day in, day out, learning, working with them to drive forward standards and make sure that we get the very, very best from our engineers. Emma, thank you so, so much for sharing today. I've learned a lot. I wish I'd studied harder at school because then I might have been an engineer. <laughs> then, that's my that's my lifelong regret. I should have studied harder. <laughs> but anyway, we can but see everybody you. over at Stand 5D30. So that's where yeah. um, the IRT, so I presume that's Hall 5D30. Um, so that's the main hall, I think. I mean, that's correct. Not that people yes. in Hall Four would thank me for that, but it is really. Let's be honest. 
Um, so uh, come and see us. Uh, we look forward to, to seeing you all there. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for listening. Have a great day, everybody. 